Murphy is glued to that rear deck. Whitmer into the zone, rolls into the throttle, and Megan, you only read that as well as I've seen anybody read it here this weekend. Look at the gap. They both have already to Lea Fouge and Magagnoli is close enough he looks to the inside and now pops to the outside it's going to be interesting see if he can execute the over under here well Nick Whitmer really has to pinch it down to the inside Magagnoli saw him just turn that wheel to the left put the accelerations down but the acceleration momentum for Nick Whitmer on the outside too overpowering on the exit of turn number one all right, Magagnoli going to try and stuff it down the inside here. Whitmer gives him a little bit of room. Magagnoli absolutely crossed up. And that is going, he's got to give that position up. That was a clear cut of the course. And uh, he'll either have to give it up or he'll be asked to make a run down pit lane, I'm sure. And so there he goes. Yeah, the so problem he is, though, he it. wants to give Whitmer the position, but he doesn't want to give Gregory Lefouge the position. His best thing to do is on the straightaway here. You just breathe it a little bit. There you go. Let Whitmer go. But you got to get right behind him or the Gregory Lea Fouge is going to take advantage. Here comes Lea Fouge. And, <laughs> and it, for an instant, Lea Fouge was third with Magagnoli second. So that, you know, that's going to be Lea Fouge and Cameron Racing's argument right there. Oh, they touched. Magagnoli felt he got kind of pushed wide there i think by Lea fouge he did actually yeah. yeah he came back over and let him know that's not cricket and uh boy it's gonna be fun here look at this side by side and all of this is just gonna help nick whitmer isn't it jeff it sure is nick whitmer's gonna be able to pull away it's toby grohovic now looking down to the inside he's gonna try to make a run on magnoli as well oh boy Magnoli gonna try and stay around the outside and again Lea fouge just runs wide now Magnoli's just going to have to tuck in behind. And there it is, the warning from the 2-0 racing room from race control. Oh, Magnoli down to the inside. Toby Grohofer right behind him. There's Mason Felipe making a move. Ooh, to get him? On Matt Travis <laughs> as well. We're going to be side by side. And Greg Lea Fouge right on the back bumper. And Nick Whitmer now to the inside. He turns the wheel down. Whitmer tries everything he can to defend. He'll have the inside here in turn 19. Lea Fouge has to give him room. He's already got word from race control. Magnoli oh! looking inside to make contact. Lea Fouge spins around. Now you knew that might well be happening after the contra time side by side by side. That, that might end in tears, and it has. And for Lea Fouge, this is massive in terms of the championship. I'm surprised he was racing that aggressively, knowing where Holton was. And Paul Holton, buy him. Bye yeah. bye. Here it is, Lea Fouge. He did move, gave Nick the room. Magnoli stuck it in there. I don't think Anthony ever presented himself to no. Gregory Lea Fouge as well. That is all fault on car number 80, unfortunately, there. Gregory Lea Fouge stuck out. Well, it's going to be reviewed. We'll give you the word as to what was the decision. But now Toby Grohovic attacking on your leader, Whitmer. So one BMW traded for another one. The battle is on at the front. We have to step away. We will be right back here to take you to the finish here at the Pearly World Challenge Grand Prix of Texas. Nick Whitmer hanging on by the skin of his teeth in the ST Racing BMW, leading here in touring car with Toby Grohovic, the defending champion in the number one classic BMW, BMW M235iR, hanging on into second. Matt Travis, who has dropped back as far as the sixth spot after starting second, Jeff, up into third. He's doing a great job <laughs> kind of just hanging out, seeing what was going to happen in front of him, let them dice it out, and then the bearer of benefit there. But Toby Grohovic looking to the outside, Nick Whitmer protecting down to the inside. I know Toby, with the season he's had, it has not been a title defense for him in that number one class. Classic BMW. They're based out of Plano, Texas. He wants nothing more to be Texas homegrown, hometown here to come out with a victory. I'll tell you what, Tony Rivera has had a storming restart after that caution. He's sitting in six and he's scrapping right now for the fifth spot. And the big story here is uh, you take a look at where number 20, Lea Fuchs is. He went from second to 20th and Holton is now up at a ninth. That is a massive swing here. Yeah, not sure what happened here. As you see, there's a big, big change in our touring car. A. Hey, let's take a quick look and see what happened here. As Kenny Morello, Jeff Sexton, and Dan Williams 
as we go back here to turn number 11. Oh, and contact. Oh, oh huge hit with Kanan O'Connell and P.J. Gronke in the TCB category cars. Elobon Goulart and Matthew Fosnott, the SAC racing team. That's going to allow Kenny Morello, Jeff Sexton, wow. and Dan Williams to get around them. Yeah, that's multi-class racing and uh, just misjudging it a little bit. Unbelievable here. So Morello now has a monster margin here over, as you said, Sexton. And there's P.J. Gronke championship implications here in TCB. You see the damage to the left front of that Chevy Sonic. Can he just bring it home? I believe it's going to put him back into about the fourth or fifth place. You see positive camber on that left front. Wow. Heavy damage there. Only has to hold it off for about three more minutes. That is a tough, tough break. Meanwhile, up front. And uh, here we go. White flag to our leader next time by Whitmer is still in that position, but Grahovic, oh, oh, Nick really crossed up there, Jeff. Big sideways as he got back to the gas. Toby Grahovic, there was no contact there, just Nick is pushing so hard to stay in front of Toby. Toby putting that pressure on. If he makes a move, you gotta watch out for your own teammate, Matt Travis, behind you. It is a big team with Classic BMW, but they're all individuals running their own cars here. And then Mason Filippi, and then uh, coming up into the uh, fray here is Steven Sajak uh, running for Zima, up into the fifth spot right there the number 18 so good run there and there's tony rivera battling uh with the 81 of jacob rude and uh holton not too he's right there as well yeah oh, this is getting interesting here they come around the wounded 74 of uh matt fosnott and we get word white flag this time by as i said for whitmer and he turns it in to turn number 12 at the end of that long straight now he's got to just Balance it on the throttle all the way through here. Foss not doing everything he can to get out of the way. Ooh, look at this. Rivera trying to squeeze down underneath the 81 of Rude. Couldn't quite get that done. And Holton wanted no part of that. Swung out way wide. Yeah, you see Nick Whitmer there protecting that inside down here in that stadium complex. Matt Travis goes way wide on the exit. I think Mason Felipe is going to be able to capitalize on as he closes the gap there. Nick Whitmer needs to keep it tight through here. Toby Grovick, you see him putting the nose of that BMW down to the inside. Just a nice four-wheel slide for Nick Whitmer. He is doing everything he can to hold off your 2016 champ. All right, here we go. Does Grohovic have enough to do something into 20? Whitmer just turns in early. It's going to slow him up, though, maybe getting onto this front straight. Grohovic got to run. Oh, this is going to be huge. Whitmer's going to go way to the inside. White flag is out. Last lap. The battle is on. What can Whitmer do? Felipe pops to the outside, trying to maybe take third away from Travis. Here we go. Down into that first turn and so far Whitmer able to hang on to it oh this is unbelievable for the championship in turn car B as well the number 20 fave of Gronke is told he's got to go through pit lane next time by to start his final lap for a drive through apparently they deemed him incident responsibility for that contact with Fosnott in that group so that's really going to hurt PJ. It really is in that championship battle, but I don't think Toby Grohovic cares about championship anymore. He knows he doesn't have an opportunity now. It's all about race winning in his home state of Texas here, trying to see if he can get around Toby Grohovic and get around Nick Whitmer. But Matt Travis starting to battle with Toby Grohovic now. It's going to be a three-way battle for the lead. I don't want to call this Greg Greenberg. I'm not sure how this is going to end up here. Yeah, well, that's a good point. And for Whitmer, if he can hang on to the win, he's got opportunity here with Leah Fouge well back, Holton back. Ooh, a little tap from Toby Grohovic as they get into turn number 11 and onto the straight. And uh, I think he was just trying to unsettle Whitmer just a little bit. And uh, right now, Whitmer is hoping that Travis comes up and starts bugging Grohovic here. Now Grohovic's going to move to the right as they head down at the end of this long straight. Is Grohovic going to try a late dive bomb move to the inside? Here he comes. Whitmer defends. They touch. They touch again. Whitmer turns underneath. Grohovic goes way off track. Locked up those brakes. And that's going to be a track limit issue here, I think, because he was not forced off that turn. Yeah, yeah not at all. And there. Oh, Whitmer got it back. Felipe to the outside of Travis. They bump as they come down here in the stadium complex. Toby Grohovic way late on the brakes there, trying to put the bumper to Nick Whitmer and just get him a little bit loose. As look at Sajak now <laughs> getting around Mason Felipe. And now Felipe's going to try and dive back down around it as Travis sweeps the outside. Oh, fabulous stuff. Whitmer 
has just that little bit of breathing room here into turn 19. One more corner to go. Can Nick Whitmer bring home a win? He's had a couple of podiums, the three of them this year, off of a uh, first pole. He does it, BMW, and ST Racing wins at Circuit of the America. What a final flurry of laps we have seen. Toby Grohovic, what a great run as well. And here is the number 25. This is the big story that's kind of developing as well. P.J. Gronke continues to run at the front of the Touring Car B category, but he was supposed to go down pit lane and uh, opted not to do that. So what will happen is they'll probably just give him a post-race, what they call a drive-through equivalent penalty. But it has now, all of that action has moved Jake Peipel up into second. And Peipel comes in uh, right in the throes of this championship hunt. O'Connell right now runs back in fifth. So big story here as Jake Peipel gets an opportunity this weekend here as he switched over to a Honda Fit a couple of races ago. And at the line, Kenny Marillo comes through and picks up the win in touring car. Jeff Sexton, what a drive by Jeff. Brings it home in second spot for that winding road team. Mazda Global MX-5 Cup car. And the number three, the excuse me, in third, the number 22. Good drive there uh, for Daniel Williams. Just a superb run for him in the team tech sports sign. That one stayed running. And that was able to bring home a podium for that team. And assuming that PJ does have to end up getting a drive-through equivalent penalty, the number six Honda Fit here of Jake Peipel will come through and pick up a win here this weekend. And it would be his third of the season. So he makes that turn into the final corner. Again, PJ is going to come through and take the checker first. Have to see how that plays out. But if he does, it is Peipel who will come by and pick up the win and behind him completing the podium as they work their way through oh man it is the number three of thompson blake thompson superb drive and then the four of jasper drangler would complete the podium so as nick whitmer if anybody's ever earned a cool down lap and a victory lap it's him we're going to pause we'll come back to hear from our winners wow <laughs> 